Sometimes I have issues with Zoom where sometimes professors can hear me, other times they can't. It's so confusing. Odd. It is. But um, I was just wondering if we can go over some questions on the practice exam. Sure. Um, my first question would be um, actually questions 10 and 11. All right, let me share it real quick. You seeing it? Yes. All right. Number 10. Which of the following is the most common type of main sequence star? Right. So um, this is one you sort of just had to remember, but um, it turns out that the high mass stars are, are there are fewer of them for two reasons. One is there are fewer of them born and they also live a lot shorter lives. So um, as you go down in mass, they become more and more common um, and they live longer and longer. So there are more and more of them. So the lowest mass stars are the most common type and that would be the M stars. Okay, that's what I thought. I wasn't sure. I just wanted to ask about yep. that quickly. Sure. Uh, number 11, which of the following yeah. is not a difference in the evolution between high mass stars and low mass stars. Okay. High mass stars go through all stages of stellar evolution much faster than low mass stars. That is true. Uh, high mass stars end their lives as neutron star or black hole, while low mass stars end their as white dwarfs. That's true. High mass stars can burn elements up to iron in their cores, while low mass stars stop the carbon. That's true. I'm hoping D is not true. High mass stars evolve mostly vertically on the HR diagram, while low mass stars revolve mostly horizontally. That's not true. Um, let me show you a how this looks on the HR diagram real quick. Oh, I did plug in the camera. This may or may not work. Let me try this again. Hmm. Let me stop my video for just a second. Oh, I can probably just change which video I go to. Let's try this. There, are you seeing it now? Yeah. Okay. So here is an HR diagram. Um, and when low mass stars down here come off the main sequence, they do a little bit of left and right, but it's almost all up. And when high mass stars do this, it is, well, they're actually starting up above here. Um, they are, it's almost always, it's almost all left and right of the HR diagram. Um, so, okay. um, There you go, that's probably a better view of it. Um, so yeah, that's definitely not the case. Uh, high mass stars are mostly horizontal, left, right on the HR diagram, and low mass stars are mostly vertical. It's the opposite. Okay, that makes sense. How are you holding up? I'm doing well. Yeah, That's me and my good. family are doing fine. Good. I mean, of course, we haven't been anywhere, just been trapped in the house. Yeah. But yeah, everything, everyone's good. Thank you That's for good. asking. How about you and your family? Uh, we're doing well. Thanks for asking. A little, That's little, good. little cabin feverish, as as you can imagine. But who isn't mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. And then my next question would be. Um, Question 27 actually had me very um, kind of confused. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. I, believe, I know you have to use the orbital, like the formula for orbital period, but I was just, I don't know, for some reason I was kind of confused on this question. Okay, let's, let's read it and see if we can unpack it. Uh, you observe stars in the outskirts of two galaxies. In galaxy A, the star is 20 kiloparsecs away from the center and is moving in a circular orbit as 120 kiloparsecs second. Galaxy B, the star is also 20 kiloparsecs from the center, but is moving in a circular orbit at 400 kilometers per second. What can you say about these galaxies? Okay, so um, we need the formula, you're right, for, well, you can tell immediately which one's more massive, right? So you can eliminate two of these guesses before you even start, right? Um, you know that uh, the, if you're the same distance from, a, from an object, the faster you're going, the, the more massive that object has to be. So uh, galaxy B has to be the more massive one. That automatically mm -hmm. eliminates A and D. 
So let's see about, uh, we know that it's moving four times as fast. Really all we need to check is whether um, the formula for orbital velocity depends on velocity, or depends on velocity or velocity squared. Let's go down and check our velocity formula. Here it is, the mass of an object is equal to the radius times the circular velocity squared divided by g. So it depends on v squared. So if you take v and multiply it by a factor of four, m has to go up by a factor of four squared or 16. So it's D for question 27? Um, D, 16 times more massive than galaxy B. Uh, ga sorry. Okay. That's, no, galaxy B, it's B. B is 16 times yeah. more massive than galaxy A, that's right. All right. Thank you. I knew, I knew it had to be B or C. I just couldn't figure out if it was no. four times or 16 times. Yeah, it's the fact that velocity is squared. And so, um, mm -hmm. so the fact that you're multiplying it by a factor of four, you have to square that four and get to 16. Yep. Okay. And then, um, I definitely know I had more questions. Oh, I thought I was sharing this with you. I was not. Let's see. There it is. And then, could we go over question um, 32? Sure. What is the first rung on the cosmic distance ladder, i.e., used to find the distance to most nearby stars? Um, that is that is parallax. That is how is we. Parallax. That is the only geometric way we have of of finding distances to nearby stars, um, and it is the the best way to do it. Um, Cepheid variables, again, these are somewhat uncommon, and so they they exist, but uh, most stars aren't. So you wouldn't be able to find the distance to a, a typical star that way. Uh, type one A supernovae. These only go off, you know, once every few centuries in our in our galaxy. Um, main sequence fitting works, um, but this doesn't work for field stars because um, they're not in clusters, so you can't you can't use the use the process. So parallax is the answer. Okay. Can we actually go over question number three? I remember there was a kappa assignment. I think it was a uh, kappa set number nine, where I think one of like the first questions actually showed us like a, a diagram similar to this. So I was yeah. trying to compare with that diagram yeah. with this one. All right, let's take a look at it. Um, so, uh, well, let, let's just go through one through four and just do them all, right? This is the main sequence. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. Okay, this is the main sequence. Um, so you have a star that is uh, on the main sequence only in stage three, right? This is the pre-main sequence, and this is the post-main sequence evolution. Um, so, so one and two would be protostar, pre-main sequence, three is the main sequence, four and five, and, and subsequent, we're in the giant phase, we're in the post-main sequence phase. The helium flash, remember, uh, after a star runs out of hydrogen on the core, it leaves the main sequence and moves up, um, but it isn't burning helium at all in this stage because it's not hot enough yet, but it's slowly getting denser and hotter as it moves up. And when it reaches five, that's as mass as, as high as it can go. And as soon as that happens, uh, this is this is where helium flat, helium burning begins and it happens all at once. And very quickly the, mo the star moves from four to, well, it's not clear here whether it's six or seven, but it moves very quickly in this direction, probably just straight to seven. Uh, which stage lasts the longest? Um, that's the one you asked for. Um, that is stage three. The main sequence is always the longest stage of a star's life. Um, okay. yeah. Helium burning at the center. Not clear if it's six or seven, but I only gave you one uh, option, and so that would be seven. Yeah. And then when you run yeah, out of helium, that's the one I chose to because I wasn't sure between the two. Right, right. But I and, and I wasn't sure either because it's not clear on the diagram really. But I would mm -hmm. I wouldn't have given you the choice of both of them because it's not obvious. Okay. But once it runs out of helium, then it will move back up uh, to to eight. Yep. Okay. But actually might be all, oh, actually, I think I might have one more question. Could we actually keep going over question 21? Sure. 
the heavy elements in the universe, everything with an atomic number greater than iron, were created in supernovae. Um, oh, supernova. Okay. Right. You can't. You can't. Uh, iron's the biggest thing you can make in the centers of stars because to make anything more massive requires energy. You don't get energy out. Um, planetary debris doesn't make anything. The beginning of the universe did make a few things, but it's almost all hydrogen and helium with a smattering of, of other very light elements. Um, and obviously, E is, is not very light. Mm -hmm. so. okay. And then, uh, can we actually go for question 22? Yep. Most new star formation in the galaxy is found in the spiral arms. Yeah. Um, the galactic center is all old stars, pretty much. The globular clusters are all old stars. The bulge is all old stars. The halo is all old stars. Um, the star formation, the, the young stars are all found in the disk, particularly the star spiral arms. So when you kind of think of like, you can kind of think of spiral arms and disk together. That's where the spiral arms are. They're in the disk of the galaxy. Um, uh -huh. uh, the, all of the spiral arms are in the disk, but not all of the disk is spiral arms. If that makes okay, sense. that makes sense. And then I think I might have one more question. Actually, for question, um, for question 19, um, would we just be able to use the formula uh, where it's R prime S equals 3M prime? Yes, because okay. you have, you have uh, a mass and solar masses, right? Um, that R, uh -huh. R prime equals 3M prime has to be solar masses for mass and kilometers for radius. Um, if you have meters and okay. kilograms, then you have to use the other one. Okay. So yeah, that's just a matter of uh, of multiplying this number by three. That's all it is, and that's and that's the number mm -hmm. in kilometers. Okay. Can we actually go over questions 23 to, uh, through 25? Sure. Ah, the rotation curve questions. Um, right. So there is, uh, um, right. So uh, these are uh, three different rotation curves, four different rotation curves. Three of them we talked about in various stages as being possible. Uh, candidates for things. Um, where all the mass is at the center, that's like the solar system, right? All the mass of the solar system is at the center and everything is going around it. And in that case, that's the Ke Keplerian rotation curve. And as you move out, uh, the planets move slower and slower. And so that's actually B. This is a Keplerian rotation curve. Uh, the Milky Way galaxy is C. It's a flat rotation curve once you get outside the very center. Um, and uh, a rotation curve for all orbiting objects have the same orbital period, um, that would be solid body rotation. That would be like the pizza or the bicycle wheel, right? Where it takes the same amount of time for everything to go around. Um, and so that would be A, because uh, okay. the further are you out, further out you are, the faster you have to be going to make, make it all the way around in the same amount of time. Okay. Yeah, I was definitely having a little bit of issues with the rotation curve, so I'll definitely have to try to look over that a little more. There was a, uh, on the video I posted yesterday lecture, there was a, um, the review question was all about rotation curves. So if you haven't watched that yet, that may be helpful. Yeah, I actually was watching this just before this. Okay, good. Yeah, so it definitely made a little more sense, but I'll definitely have to look over them a little yep. more. And I was actually just curious, since it's only me on here, could we actually just go through all the answers for the uh, practice exam? Would that be okay? Sure, why not? Okay. You want to give me your best guesses for all of them and I'll, I'll set, tell you whether I agree? Sure. Okay, so for um, question one, I put B. Yep. For question two, I put C. Uh, yep. 
And then for question three, which we went over before, I yep. did put B originally. Yep. Uh, and then for four, I put D. Yep. For five, I put A. Uh, yep. Uh, for question six, I put E. Yep. Uh, for question seven, I put A. Yep. And then for question eight, I put B. Yes. Okay. Uh, for question nine, I put, I wasn't actually sure about question nine. I put D. You're right. All right. Okay. And then uh, we went over 10 and 11, uh, 10 yep. was C and 11 was D. Uh, for yep. 12, I put A. Yep. Okay. Uh, 13, I put A. Yep. Okay. Uh, for 14, I put I wasn't sure about 14. I put B. You're right. Oh, okay. Because I remember talk. I remember you talking about that in one of the videos, and like I couldn't find it in my notes. So I was like, I think it's a white dwarf. But I can't really remember. Yeah, high mass stars can become black holes or neutron stars. Brown dwarfs are are stars that are so they're not even stars. They're so low mass they don't even reach the main sequence. Um, obviously, E isn't the answer. Uh, so low mass stars will become white dwarfs eventually. Okay. Uh, for 15, I put B. Yep. Okay. Um, for 16, I put C. Yep. Okay. Uh, 17, I put B. No. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, uh, it's A, it's spaghettification is the process of getting stretched out and squeezed together as you get near a black hole. It turns everything okay. into spaghetti. And can you actually just repeat what that process is again? Sure. Um, so when you get near a black hole, let me just uh, share my video with you so you can see the... Okay, so here's how this works. Um, here's a black hole, and here is some object, let's say it's you or something. Um, the, the, the extreme gravity due to this object is, is pretty intense. Um, and, and not only is it intense, it's variable, right? So this corner, for instance, is feeling a force in this direction, and then this corner is feeling a force in this direction. And that is a very intense force that actually causes the whole thing to get squeezed together. The other thing that happens is the near side of this object feels a much stronger gravitational pull than the far side of this object. And so that makes it so this whole thing seems to get squeezed as it moves towards the black hole. And so you get a squeeze in this direction and a stretch in this direction that tends to make everything elongate and spaghettify. Oh, okay. Is it like in the video with like the person talking about like a person? Yeah, right. How they, okay. Exactly, exactly right. Okay. And, and a spaghettification is just a fun, fun way word for, for stretching and squeezing that happens in that case. Everything, okay. all, all matter gets ripped apart, basically. All right. All right. So for question uh, 18, I put D. That is true. Okay. Uh, 19, we went over before with C. Yep. Uh, 20, I put C also. Yep. Okay. Uh, for 21, B. Um, 22 was A. Um, and then we went over we went 23. Over yep. Yeah, B, C, A. Uh, 26. And actually, just to make sure for 23 to 25, it goes B, C, A, correct? B, C, A, yep. Okay. Uh, for 26, I put B. Yep. Okay. Uh, for 27, we went over it was B. Uh, 28, I put, I put D for this one, but I wasn't sure. What a Milky Way, do stars must be gas in highly elliptical and random orbits. Um, it is D, that's right. It is, okay. Um, and then for 29, uh, it was E. Uh, 30, I put E. Disk of our galaxy, yeah. O and B stars are only in the disk of our galaxy because they are they live very short lives and they can only live in places where star formation is going on. Yep. Uh, well, it's actually all of the above. 
yeah. Yeah, I open, said, yeah. Open clusters, e, right? gas and dust, all, uh, yeah, all of those, all E, that's okay. right. all, all of them exist in the list right now. So, yeah. Okay. And then for uh, 31, I put A. Uh, the disk component includes which of the following parts? Um, it, no, just the spiral arm. It's C, right? Okay. No. The halo is uh, is not in the disk, and library clusters are in the halo. Okay. And then for 32, we went over it with B. And yep. then for 33, I put B. That's right. OK, great. And I was actually just wondering, what is the answer to question 34? Yeah, um, well, right. This was last year. So obviously, this isn't, but we went over this quite a bit um, last year. I talked a little bit about it this year. Um, it was a black hole. They they got the first ever image of an actual black hole uh, two weeks ago, one year ago. I'm ready. And I, I think that's actually all the questions I had. And then the uh, exam period is going to work similar to exam uh, two, where you open it up on Thursday, and then we have until Sunday to complete it, correct? That's right. OK. And it's still the 75 minute uh, time span? Yep. OK, perfect. And I think that's actually all the questions I had. OK, great. All right. Well, thanks for talking yeah, thank by, Thank you Alexa. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck with your have a good day. exam. You too. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.